Welcome to Oxford, Mississippi, home to one of the most spectacular tailgating scenes in the country and the 6-1 Ole Miss Rebels, led by quarterback Eli Manning, who hopes tonight to add yet another chapter to the family legend. ESPN2 primetime college football from sold out Vaught Hemingway Stadium tonight. The Arkansas Razorbacks winners of three straight and the Ole Miss Rebels even hotter. Five straight victories, six and one, and they play for a share of first place tonight in the SEC West. A win will pull them even with the idle Auburn Tigers. Houston Nutt in his fourth year as the head coach of the Razorbacks, and maybe no one in the country has had a better in-season turnaround this year. David Cutcliffe, his third year with the Ole Miss Rebels, has never lost to Arkansas 2-0. and And tonight, as we said, Ole Miss playing for a share of first place in the SEC West. Arkansas has won the toss and elected to receive the opening kick. And Lee Rogers is set to kick it deep to Lawrence Richardson or Marvin Jackson. Always entertaining with Ole Miss and Arkansas get together, and we're underway, and this will be Richardson from the goal line. And a return of 25 yards, and Arkansas will start from the 25, and we'll see the two-headed quarterback system again this week, but it begins with Zach Clark, the sophomore from Fayetteville, son of an assistant Arkansas baseball coach, who says we are starting to find our identity on offense, and that is major progress. Rest of the bud, offensive starters, tally, another start at tailback, Lancaster two ways, some defensive end two with Wilson Smith and Ball heading the receiving court. Progress means they've gone from averaging 103 total yards in their first two games, 317 total yards since. And Clark right to the air with all day to pick out a receiver, and it's overthrown, intended for Jason Peters, converted defensive end now at tight end. And the offensive line for Arkansas is a big group. It is a big group already led by true freshman Sean Andrews. Right tackle number 73, thought by many to be the best high school offensive lineman in the country a year ago. The Ole Miss defensive front, a very small group, with the exception of Kenny Jackson at 309. Everybody else undersized. You ever seen it under 32 at defensive tackle? That's converted linebacker Anthony Sims. Ole Miss very quick. Everyone that's played them says they play very hard all night long. First game of the day to Tally. He comes around the left corner and run out of bounds near the 31 yard line. Ole Miss linebacking core. Yeah, well, you mentioned the D-line. Jackson was size. The only one with size that had linebackers. Eddie Strong, 245 pounds. Last four games, he's averaged at least 10 tackles a game. This is the number two pass defense in the country, and they're led by Senator Taylor. All SEC at free safety last year. But moved to corner for this his senior season, and he's their leader with three interceptions. Eddie Strong, the junior strong side linebacker, their leading tackler. Missed all last year with a stress fracture in his left foot and making up the last time. A third and a short five. Clark with the short out, and it's caught by George Wilson. A very interesting thing to see here. The most interesting to me with Arkansas on offense is how Houston Nutt is going to go with his two QB system. Mike told us in the open what they did last year. There it is as a reminder. Jones, a big 6'5", lanky guy, runs faster than he looks. Zach Clark has gone from highly inaccurate early in the year to very accurate now. And Matt Jones, the true freshman from Fort Smith. Ready to check in either at quarterback or possibly wide receiver. Clark. Again, overthrowing Jason Peters, and lucky that one wasn't intercepted. That was a five-yard pass that he wanted to uh, to get to Jason Peters, and Jason Peters is going to be an interesting one to watch tonight for Arkansas. Six foot five, three hundred and five-pound tight end. Where is football going, Bill? You're just jealous because he got moved from defensive tackle to tight end, and they didn't do that for you. He can run four-seven. He can catch that. Beats your five-seven. <laughs> 
to Corey Birmingham, another true freshman in a tailback, and he gets it on the draw, and he is hit immediately for no gain. And Kenny Jackson leading the charge along with L.P. Spence, who is the SEC Defensive Player of the Week for his effort last week. Eight tackles, two sacks, forced a fumble against LSU. You will see Ole Miss lining up all over the ballpark on defense. Then you'll see Arkansas do the same. And in a minute or two, I'm going to tell you why you'll see the similarities. Third and ten for a team that does not convert many third downs. With four wides and Clark from the shotgun. They come after him with Strong diving at his ankles. They hurry him into an incompletion. Intended for Birmingham. They brought Strong and Lanier Gofi on a blitz and it worked. Clark got outside of that, but he doesn't throw as well on the run as he does in the pocket. He has a little escapability problem and he has some problems when he's running. You're going to see Mississippi coming right up the gut. With Gothy and Strong coming from the outside, Zach Clark pays the price with an incompletion. So on comes the junior from Harrison, Arkansas, Richie Butler. At nearly 43 yards per kick, Jason Armstead is deep for Ole Miss. Pretty good kick. Armstead with a fair catch at the 20. 41-yard effort by Butler. Eli Manning. And the Ole Miss offense in the five-game winning streak, averaging right at 37 points per game. And there's probably not a hotter quarterback in the country. First-year starter, remembered, really only saw much action in the fourth quarter of his redshirt freshman season in the bowl game, the Music City Bowl. He was spectacular, and that was just a sneak peek of what he had in store this year. As to the Bud starters, Gunn, as we said, third all-time in rushing yards with Stackhouse's fullback. And two new starters at wide receiver, Bill Flowers, Jason Einstein. And it is Stackhouse who gets the first carry and picks up about two. The Ole Miss offensive line, Mike, not a very big group. No, they're not, but I'll tell you one guy who is, Terrence Metcalf, the left tackle. There's a lot of men on this field. This is one of the best out there. He's playing tackle on Sundays. You'll see him play guard. He is a mauler on the old line. Now, the Arkansas defensive line with Hall, Brooks, Davis, and House, a variety of looks. Lear from the three to a five-man front. And now four down line. And with the offset eye, the first pass of the night by Manning. Here's a strike, Bill Flowers, redshirt freshman, out of Pelham, Alabama, for 13 yards and a first down. The Arkansas linebackers build it, led by Jermaine Petty. Jermaine Petty not only leads him, he had an 88-yard interception return last week. His buddies Tony Brewer and Caleb Miller were teasing about getting two or three blocks for him because it took him so long to get to the end zone. Richardson, Harris, Hamlin, Jackson in the secondary, second of the country last year against the pass, and 32nd. Still not bad this year. First down and 10. And Manning going deep on play action. Another catch. Flowers into Arkansas territory at the 46, and that one's good for 19 yards. Right now, we're seeing Eli Manning throw the ball. For those of you that think he's going to air it all night, all, uh, air it out all night, I'll get it out. You're mistaken. This is a very balanced offense. This is incredible. You want to talk about just about a 50-50 split, Bill. This is exactly what you look for on offense. This is how you keep defenses off balance. Bill Flowers with a career-high six catches last week at LSU. Before that, only five had not really played any role in the offense until a week ago. Robert Williams they welcome back this week. Missed three games, had his knee scoped, and uh, his first carry right through the middle for a couple. Similarities on the Arkansas defense to that of Ole Miss result from the fact that Don Lindsay, who's the maestro of defense in the minds of many, and I'm one of them, is the defensive coordinator for Ole Miss. He trained John Thompson, the now famous defensive coordinator for Arkansas, in stints at Arkansas and at Alabama with us. So you're going to see a lot of similarities in people bouncing around, standing up, getting down, trying to create confusion for the offense. Three receivers, and Manning as that one incomplete as he tried to get it to Flowers. Now they're going to call, make it a late hit holding or a late hit on the quarterback. 
Yeah. It's going to be Tony Boo, number 22. He came from the left defensive side, had a clear shot at Manning, and he took it. Now, that's a dangerous thing to do around here, to be hitting Eli late. <laughs> <laughs> be hitting Eli even during the play. Bottom of the screen. Personal foul. Let's see Run when he passes. throws it. On the defense, 15 yards, automatic uh, first down. You know, I don't know. close, bro. wasn't it? I saw maybe one, one and a half steps. That's, I, I don't know. It's, I see it, and I've said it before well, in college and the NFL. Well, I don't know. What did he tell us this week? I have to go 110 miles an hour every single play. That was about 120. He yeah. was doing it, and I think, I think that was a clean hit. So, with the knock off, we'll snap this one from the 28. And Joe Dunn with his first carry. Coming right, tripped up at the 25-yard line. Quick pursuit from Arkansas, Hamlin and Richardson chasing him down. And, and I want to explain real quick what I mean about why I think it was a good hit, guys, because you know, I've, I've said this a lot. There's a setup for it. If the quarterback's going to get hit legally within a step or a step and a half, then that's the things they remember. They, get, they accumulate through the game, so maybe they're worried about the rush a little more than what's happening downfield. If you're taking that away from the defenders, you're taking away an intimidation factor the defense can have. Yeah, I feel so sorry for all you defenders. <laughs> I, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I I wasn't at all. And second and seven. Great play flake by Manning. And the throw immediately ended. Flowers somehow hangs on as Hamlin blasts him at the 20. Wow. This guy is really a fine receiver. Had a nice visit with his dad, Richmond Flowers, yesterday in town. He hangs on to the football. This is what characterized his performance a week ago. It doesn't matter whether he's hit, whether he's in the middle of traffic. He just catches the football. He's got a long and fruitful career ahead of him. Richmond, the former Dallas Cowboy and New York Giant wide receiver. On third and two, down a huge hole to the 11. And let's go down to Michelle Tafoy. You've talked an awful lot about Flowers. After the Arkansas State game, Flowers set up a meeting with Cutcliffe to clarify his role on the team. Tough for him to do, took a lot of guts. He was nervous, so he wrote notes on index cards so he wouldn't forget any of the points he wanted to say. Now, Cutcliffe liked the upfront attitude. He said, it's what all players should do when they, when they want to understand the circumstances about their roles. I think he understands, Bill. Yeah, I think you got a nice response, too. <laughs> Motion from Doug Ziegler to tie down on first and 10 from the 11 and down right through the same hole and plugged much more effectively this time. The Arkansas run defense has been an issue for them. They're only ninth in the SEC, giving up 169 yards per game. Both these defenses have struggled against the run, but Mississippi's got a nice series going, Mike, and we hadn't had a chance to comment on it. They're running a trap to the fullback, and then they're booting off the trap, getting Eli out on the corner and throwing the football, and it's, it's tough for the linebacker. That yeah. balance, run, play, action, boot. This is second and seven. And it's time to pitch to Williams. Looking for him right side with a dive. Does he get the goal line? Not quite. He's inches short, but that's first and goal. Robert Williams, Jr. out of Gadsden, Alabama. The touchdown saving tackle made by Lawrence Richardson. Well, that was one-on-one, -on -one, though, with Ken Hamlin, who had the big hit on Flowers. Look at number six, Hamlin, out there. He's going to have it. He's going to have the angle. Williams does a nice job beating him to the corner to get the extra yards. So from inside the one, first and goal. With the power formation. And the goal is to towards Sanford, who has scored a team-high seven touchdowns, but not here. Now, Ole Miss has been in the red zone 32 times. 27 of those, they've scored touchdowns. That is incredible. They've kicked one field goal. As a matter of fact, have you ever, at any point in any season, not involving a junior high team, seen a team that had 36 touchdowns and one field goal? Is the field no. goal kicker on scholarship? <laughs> <laughs> is he working? What's that? Same look. Second down, and this leap is good for six, and Joe Gunn has Ole Miss on the board. The 
decided to go over the brother combination. Bill Belton Johnson and Marcus Johnson, the right guard and right tackle brothers. Johnson and Johnson. Johnson group. and Johnson. If they can agree on the calls, they do all right. They got Two the big right guys, they disagree. Big brother Belton makes a call, and Marcus said, no way. <laughs> <laughs> they agreed on that one. Jonathan Nichols. Much more accustomed to that kick rather than the field goals. And he adds the PAT gun with the leap over the Arkansas line. 7 0. Ole Miss. Both teams traded possessions, and as we rejoined the action just before halftime, the Hogs have it first down and 15 near their own 45 yard line. Ole Miss is still leading Arkansas 7 0 right here on ESPN Classic. Cobbs, four carries for 31 yards tonight. And again on the draw play. Much better defense up the middle. This time limited to just two. The most physically imposing linebacker that Ole Miss has is Eddie Strong. Don Lindsay gets him lined up all the way on the outside. Nobody knows where he is, so he isn't blocked. So now you've got a hit in the backfield, and you're suddenly second and 14. He <laughs> looked very serious right there, doesn't he, Mike? <laughs> Looking to throw a deep hit as he delivers incomplete. Ole Miss follows it, hoping it was a fumble. It was an incomplete pass as Charlie Anderson came down hard on Zach Clark. I told you that Strong was serious. Guess who? I mean, and Zach Clark will hang in the pocket. He'll step up to the last minute. He waited a half, half second too long, and Strong got to him and interrupted the pass. Again, down the bottom of your screen, you see him take on Cobbs. Cobbs doesn't get a good enough block on him. Clark hangs on to the ball. Strong finishes him off. It's a theory of defense. You mismatch. Strong is too much for a tailback. You have to hurry to get this one off. They call their second time out. They were down to two seconds on the play clock. And with a minute seven, they think on third and 14, how to get it done. Arkansas has figured out something on these third downs, but this is a tough one. Seven of the first 11, but they need 14 here. They need to get inside the Ole Miss 40, and Clark with time now. Steps up, fires it complete right at the marker. This is going to be close for Wilson. Very close. Well, even if he's not there, they have to go for it. I mean, I, this, this, I think this was two down territory for them. I mean, when you're four and three, you take your chances. All well, right. You always eyeball it and call it. Yeah, well, the, I think he has it. He's in my way. I couldn't see. I'll tell you this. Whatever happens, George Wilson is a veteran receiver. He's off his man. He needs to have more depth than that. And Clark needs to make a better throw than this. I think he's short. First down. I think he's about two inches short. Please let me be right. Ah, oh, darn it. First time this year. Gotcha. You know what? I, I was wrong on purpose. I was just tired of being <laughs> right all the time. It must be awful. Mm. You, just, you get tired of it? You know, like, well, so do we. I live with it. Oh, I can't get away from myself. <laughs> well, under a minute and one time that is left. For Houston, not. How do you stand that? Not trying to get a rare SEC road victory. He's lost 11 of his last 12. Away from the state of Arkansas in conference. Clark again with plenty of time. And up to a cut by the fullback, Mark Pierce. Texas Class 4A Player of the Year last year at Weatherford. And Clark gets that clock stopped at 38 seconds. And they also get another first down inside the Ole Miss 30. That's a tough throw, Bill. I mean, it doesn't yeah, look like a long throw, nice. but a little, little out. 
and that, he puts it right on the rope. Oh, yeah. He's got to be out there. That was a nice throw by Zach Clark. And well executed by Pierce, who's a true freshman. Got out of bounds. That was the best thing he did outside yeah. of the catch. Arkansas has played an all true freshman backfield at times this year with Jones. Clark engineering this drive and throws that one deep up the side. And it is caught and out of bounds goes Wilson at the eight. 21 yards first and goal. Why this works is receivers turn around before defensive backs, coach. And I'm sure you've seen this a ton of times. The receiver gets first crack at it when it's underthrown like that. Seneca Taylor is a fine corner. This is an old John Unitas trick. The ball is thrown short intentionally. I'm sure Clark will tell you. Oh, yeah, I threw it short intentionally. The receiver sees it first, comes back for it. The DB is, is left on an island. He's running blind. He's trying to grab shirt, trying to do anything to keep this ball from being caught. But the receiver has the advantage on a throw like that. Nice job by George Wilson. And Ole Miss has called its first time out. Nice drive by Arkansas. Some nice throwing by Zach Clark. Nice pitching and catching where early on there was a couple of drops, yeah. which, as you said, Bill, plagued them early in the year when they ranked statistically last after the first couple of weeks of the season on uh, offense. Oh, what's been good for them is keeping the ball away from Eli Manning. They've got better than a five-minute advantage time of possession. A lot of times it's misleading, but 17-plus minutes, they've held it, and Manning has only thrown nine passes. He's hit six for 61 yards. The best way to have a great offensive player not kill you is to keep him on the bench. And people who say time of possession is not an important stat, better have an offense like Steve Spurrier's because <laughs> otherwise you better keep that other offense off the field. And there's only one of those Spurrier type offense. So time of possession is crucial. And more trips inside the red zone fueling the Arkansas three game winning streak. Clark, two of his first 12 through the air. He's hit three straight and going again on that left side for Wilson. He was in bounds with 25 seconds. Arkansas calls its last timeout to stop the clock as Wilson gets him to the two. They've scored 12 out of 14 times in the red zone, but only six of those have been touchdowns. One of their problems in the early going this year and I'll guarantee you, Coach Nutt does not want to kick a field goal here. No. No, you need to you need to cash this one. Another good throw, another underthrown, low and away throw by Clark to Wilson. I think he wanted him to get it out of bounds though on that one and not have to waste that time out. Seneca Taylor again on the coverage. What do you do here now, Bill? What, what's the call? Can you run it wide? Do you try and get that? Well, run it wide against Ole Miss, I don't think uh, it's tough to do. They're too fast. You get your quarterback on the corner. Yep. He either throws it in the end zone, trying to get the touchdown, runs it in, oh, or throws, throws it away. Throw it up. It, it, regardless, you get the clock stopped. And if he's going to be tackled, you tell him to get rid of that football. Some nice construction he can throw it into. Yeah, yeah. all the way into the yeah. top deck. <laughs> this is not a Ken Trevor project right here. Our able spotter and booth man most of the other projects we've seen this year have been Ken Trevor Blacksburg Virginia and um, Fayetteville Arkansas what was he to design them yeah he's blushing shaking my hand he's so proud actually a very able foreman on that's the right Michelle's at home smiling he owes you money for that oh yeah from the two second and goal we saw Brandon O'Donohue the kicker they hope to keep on the bench and they punch it in for six. Cobbs getting wide, and he will walk in. Good job, Good job. We may be seeing the rebirth of Cedric Cobbs here tonight in this first half. Actually, I don't think this was a good call. It worked only because yeah. Eddie Strong missed the tackle. Eddie Strong's got him nailed for about a six-yard loss. He's the best defensive player. He's loose in the backfield, unblocked. you got to count on your main man making that play. And Eddie knows it. He's sick about it. Because if he gets him on the ground, they got to kick the field goal. Yeah, they'd have to kill the clock and uh, to try and kick it. There was a penalty after unnecessary roughness on Seneca Taylor on a late hit on Cobbs after the touchdown. But that's 
the Cobbs that they saw two years ago. Absolutely. And you know, and, and Bill talked about how he's been nicked up, and it's very difficult as you get nicked up during the year. Obviously, everybody gets nicked up, but it wears and tears on. You never get back to 100% again once you start with the little well, nagging ankles, knees, especially hamstrings. Especially the first time you go through it. The right. kid's never been hurt before. He had that bad shoulder that cost him the season last year. Then he comes back, and it's tough. So O'Donohoe to tie it up with 20 seconds to go in the half, and he stays perfect on the year. Eddie Strong loose in the backfield right here. You'll see him run through and be clean, which is exactly what the scheme calls for. No blocker on. you got to make that play, Mr. Strong. Wasn't that a good play, though, by Cobbs? No, no good, good play, play by, by Strong. Give him a little hand here. Give him a little, little stiff yes. arm. That works. Stiff then he gets power. to the outside. Absolutely a nice job because that play was not designed to go there. Used to nut at times has buried Cobbs on the bench. He's taken the mothballs off this first half, and uh, he could still be a major factor the rest of the year for oh, Arkansas. I think they're counting on him being just that. Down to Michelle. Well, the mood on this Arkansas sideline is elation over the score, but a very business-like approach, as though they expected the score. And this win on the road would be so pivotal for Arkansas, and they look as though they feel like they belong right here, guys. They have never beaten Ole Miss over here. Of course, they used to play as non-conference rivals. Well, Arkansas was in the Southwest Conference in Little Rock and in Jackson. So it's just recently that they've moved to the on-campus facility. And uh, Ole Miss blasted Arkansas in Fayetteville last year, 38-24. On stick. Pretty nice return. For the 35, 26 yards with 13 seconds for Manning to work with. Maybe the shower worked, guys. Bill, that's something I hadn't heard about before. Michelle Tafoy, as Michelle told us in the beginning of the game, that Houston Nutt said they're going to travel about an hour away. They're going to do their uh, come out on the field. They're going to go in and then take a shower and wake up because, you know, you, you get a little tired when the games are later in the day. So we tried this. I know I'd never done that in college or pro. I, you said you hadn't either. Kind of a new approach. And, cleanest team in the league. Well, there you have it. Plus, they don't have to shower after the game now. That's exactly right. Yeah. And that was Mike and mine conclusion. <laughs> That's good. We won't have to take a shower after it. Just the 24th snap for Eli Manning. Arkansas has had 44. They've kept the ball away from the Ole Miss offense. And Joe Gunn will carry on the last play of the first half. And Houston Nutt encouraged as well he should be with a 7-7 halftime tie. Eli Manning, when he's been in, 6-9, 61 yards. But Cedric Cobbs has returned to be a big factor tonight for Arkansas. Mississippi missed a scoring opportunity with an unsuccessful 20-yard field goal attempt by Jonathan Nichols early in the third quarter. With the game still tied, we move ahead in the action where Arkansas has it first down and 10 on the Rebels' 42-yard line after a shank Mississippi punt. Arkansas takes over after the shank at the 42-yard line of Ole Miss. This is a 7-7 game that feels like Arkansas is ahead by two touchdowns. That's how the momentum has been. Yet they're still tied. It's another catch by Mark Pierce. Promising freshman fullback driven out. They have enough for the first down. Knocked out by Matt Greer, the strong safety. That's what running does for you. That's what successful running does for you. It affords you to throw it on first down and have a man open. And Zach Clark has hit Pierce a couple of times on these quick out routes and is throwing it right on the money, giving Pierce a chance to run after the catch. The thinking on the Arkansas offensive staff early in the year was that Pierce was going to be really good in time. And when we were there before and went to Thursday practice, Houston Nutt spent much of it throwing those little out, little diagonal patterns to the fullback and their nice first down calls. I don't think he has it. Put my guess in real quick. Yeah, well, that, I think that was very courageous right. that you waited till they got over no, there. No, the I chain. waited till you were done talking. I yeah. didn't want to interrupt Thanks. you. Thanks. I was motioning to Dave over there. Dave, I don't well, think why, they have it. I was saying that. Why should you be sensitive about that now? <laughs> why are you so mean to me? <laughs> I'm not mean to you. I just you tell are. the truth. No, the, you tell the truth, you don't have to remember what you said. My wife says you're mean to me. Chris said I was mean to you. Mm -hmm. 
Dave says it too. Hey, <laughs> get me into this. Second and a foot. I am so kind to you. Well, this is one of those plays where you wonder if they'll take a shot. They should. Yep. You want to score? I this agree. Is, this is a good time to put one up. Although they come out with two tight ends, one wide out, Richard Smith. One man route, manned up. He comes in motion, followed by Justin Coleman. Nope. Great safe sneak first down to the 30. <laughs> well, that that's much, a, that, that Tommy Bowden theory on second and short. He'll go for the first down just to keep the chains moving. And again, you're keeping Eli Manning on the bench where you want him if you're Arkansas. Well, this is they went no huddle. Mississippi just tried to get a couple of defenders on. And Arkansas went no huddle to keep him off the field. Really smart. As smart as a tree for an owl. On this snap, Arkansas will have run 25 more plays than Ole Miss. And it's Hobbs off the left side for a pickup of four. Let's check in down below with Michelle. Dave Zach Clark says one of the biggest reasons he's playing better is that he's figuring out how to relax. He said early on he was putting pressure on himself, getting a little too technical, trying to be too perfect with his mechanics, and feeling like he had to make every throw. Now he says he's just letting go, letting talent take over. He said it's not worth worrying. I might as well go out and have fun, Dave. It's working. Yes, it is. Good attitude. Although poor start tonight, he missed 10 of his first 12 and then got it going. He was hot all last week, nine in a row, in fact, first half. As they knocked off Auburn big, and now trying to do Auburn a favor here by knocking off Ole Miss. This is their second timeout with 5.51 still to go in the third quarter. They have another promising drive brewing, and Manning still on the bench. Arkansas, the number 114 ranked offense in the country, has outgained powerful Ole Miss group by 70 yards. They need seven on second down, and Jones just does get that one off, and it's almost intercepted, but twice he avoids disaster. It's off the hands of Matt Greer. <laughs> Great job of finally getting rid of the ball, but make it a little more obvious. Get it way out of bounds. Well, you know, nice job escaping because you can't afford to lose some yards here. You can you get in field goal range. He avoids it once and twice and then tries to get it out of there. It's a great job of avoiding the sack. They would have been out of field goal range. LP Spence and Josh Cooper in his face. A lot of speed on the Mississippi defense. Not much size, a lot of speed. So Justin Coleman again come out to pick up the only Arkansas wide man, Richard Smith. Two tight ends. Play action. Going deep for Smith. Diving catch. No. Couldn't hang on. It happens again. Boy, it looked like he had that at the three. A season-long theme for Arkansas's receivers. Well, they went through the early stretch where they were dropping everything, and then, then they had a long period where they were catching the ball pretty well the last three games, and he fell on the ball. Yeah. Here. That's what happened, yeah, not, not the wind not out the of wind him. himself, yeah. But. Justin Coleman in coverage, but it's a perfect throw, yep. and, and you have to make the – if you're going to be the SEC champs or beat the team that – aspires to be in the champs and you got to make those catches Smith last year at 33 receptions for a freshman record that one should have hung on to and uh, pops up apparently as Houston nut checks on him that ball will no take the air damage. out of you. When, when you land on that ball it'll take it'll make the air leave your body real quick did you ever land on that ball I had enough padding there where it really didn't do anything <laughs> In fact, I knocked the air out of the ball. So I, I never got to me. land on one. It was <laughs> never in my hands after the uh, first attempt to second. For the lead now on fourth and seven, O'Donohoe is going to try a 45-yarder. And I watched him in warm-ups, and, and he hit a couple from 50, but just getting over the crossbar. So this certainly within his range. This is a good angle for a right-footed kicker on a long kick. It can start it out at the upright, right upright, and hook it in. And this would be the longest of his career. Going best is 38 yards. On a hold of Dow Loggins for the lead. 45, no problem. Brennan O'Donohoe has Arkansas on top.
the sophomore out of El Dorado, Arkansas. Quiet. A sold-out bought Hemingway Stadium. 10-7. You One call thing. it, Bill. You call it. Started toward the one upright and just kind of hooked a little bit in. One thing to notice about this, it was a well-executed kick, but it was low. He did not have good trajectory. He kicked the ball low, and if he tries another long one, you can bet your bottom dollar that Ole Miss will have a middle block on and they'll have a shot at getting a piece of it. Well, we've got an Ole Miss wide awake right now, trailing 10-7. They have Armstead back. 5.32 to go, and Ole Miss still trying to figure out the Arkansas defense. First drive of the second half. Looked like they were going to punch it in. They got a 56-yard running to Doug Ziegler completion to get it down close. And a short field goal went wide. Armstead returns this one, crossing left to right. And a big return it is. The kicker, Carlton, knocking him out of bounds at the 40. A 53-yarder. And now everybody's away. You look for that spark. You don't know where it's going to come from or when it's going to happen. But team in Ole Miss's situation right now needed the spark. And there it is. The way you return a kickoff is just like this. You explode through the wedge, not knowing whether you're going to get hammered or you're going to hit the crease. And that way, if the crease is there, you get a chance to hit it. Armstead, a courageous and a lightning fast return. Junior from Moss Point. As Eli Manning set up at the 40. And Joe Gunn through the middle, close to 10, the first down. Gunn with a neck problem in the first half. They checked him, said he was good to go, and back in indeed. That was a middle of that offensive line for Ole Miss, led by Ben Clax in the center. It's exactly where the run ended up. It started left. You'll see him cut back, go right back over the middle. Yeah, and your big man, Metcalf, had a nice block on Carlos Hall. Got it, had him stood up, moved him, turned him out of the hole. Tenth carry, 39 yards. The gun has done over 2,400 career yards tonight. Third in the all-time Ole Miss list. They got nine. Marker down. They run the reverse on the throwback. And Manning from Armstead so low that he had to go to his knee at the 25, but a marker is down. Yeah, you got a quick flag, too, so either someone in the neutral zone or not on defense or not enough people on the line of scrimmage on the offense when the flag came out that quick. Last week, and it is shift against uh, Ole Miss, but last week that worked for Nebraska, didn't work for Oklahoma, and maybe put some ideas in a few coaches' heads around the country. This is an illegal formation or an illegal shift. The illegal shift on the offense, two men in motion, five-yard penalty, still second down. The rule says you can only have one guy moving at a time. And off, come back, and Mr. Manning's going to take it right outside. I didn't see the second man I move. I didn't see the second man move either. And Eli's going to have to work with Armstead on his passing. Yeah. After all that, second and six, adding play action. This is Stackhouse. Mm. Stays on his feet yeah. to the 17. I like Stackhouse. What a man with that football. I think he should have more touches in this game. He was big time from fullback and tailback against LSU. Tough to tackle. Nice soft hands. Eli says, this is where you throw the ball to your guy. And again, the fullback. We saw Arkansas use the fullback with Mark Pierce. We see Eli Manning and Ole Miss use it with Stackhouse. And against the home state, he gets 17 yards and a Mississippi first down at the 18. Motion out of the backfield by Robert Williams. Manning throwing for Williams. To the 15 and more. To the 6, first and goal. 12 yards. Short passes have been the key to this Ole Miss drive. And Williams will limp off the field. I talked about one of the big men on the field, Terrence Metcalf. Watch him move. He can motor right here. You're going to see him get to the outside. That's a big man jumping out, taking care of two guys. The road grader moving two out of the way. We know he can go straight ahead. Now we see him go sideways. Ziegler split out. One of the tight end. Wide and now comes in motion. Gun for Williams at tailback. 
On first and goal at the six. Manning carries out the fake beautifully. <laughs> Rolling. And now has to throw it into the first row. All that coming up empty. But what a fake. <laughs> wow. You know, Talking about fundamentals yeah. of football, beautiful ball handling. This is stuff learned over a long, long period of time. He makes the football disappear. It's on his hip. Carlos. Very, Hall. very pregnant pause. <laughs> a long pause. The defense has no idea what's going on, but they can't get the receiver to the right place. Somebody got knocked down on a drag that was supposed to be over there with, uh, with Eli. Archie like ball handling. Second and goal. And Zebra in motion. And a handoff for a yard for Stackhouse. Boy, they have to be sick on that last play, Bill. That was executed beautifully by Eli Manning. Just sucked in Carlos Hall and nobody out there to throw it to. What a, a waste of just a fantastic execution. Well, two plays. You think about the quarterback throwback. Right. It would have been a, a, a walk-in with a good throw and without some kind of strange penalty. And then that play where the receiver didn't get over there to be with Eli. Well, there's that balance we talked about in the beginning. The balance has only produced seven points. And they had to settle for field goal attempts twice all year. If they don't pick this one up, they're going to have to settle for it twice and a bad snap. Manning covers it at the 14, and we've not seen this all year out of Ole Miss. And you saw what happened. Ben Claxton was changing the protection, so Eli went up and changed as well. And then the play clock was running down. He gave a quick signal for Claxton to snap the ball. And I don't think Peyton was ready. Or yeah, Peyton. Eli was ready for it. See, I'm he was looking to his right. done that earlier. 32 yarder for the tie by Nichols. He was wide right from 20. Only one of the three from the year. It was a 27 yarder. This one also drifting right, but not before it gets inside that right upright barely, and it's 10 all. He flirted with that thing again. Ben Claxton over there explaining, yeah, I had to change the call, and then suddenly it was time to snap the ball, and a loss of poise by the Ole Miss offense, which is not characteristic, right. especially with Manning and Claxton. 48th meeting between Ole Miss and Arkansas has been a bruising contest. You don't believe us? Ask the quarterbacks. And the only two touchdowns have been short runs by Joe Gunn and Cedric Cobbs. Field goals in the third quarter bring us to the fourth. Tied at 10. First down and 10 for Arkansas at their 35-yard line. Ole Miss playing for a piece of first place in the West. They've got their hands full. Tally. Seven yards off tackle in the ESPN2 game track through three quarters. Arkansas did not turn the ball over in beating South Carolina and Auburn. They've survived two turnovers so far tonight. Eli Manning, 11 out of 20, 167 yards, but no touchdown. Ole Miss needed a spark. Jason Armstead gave it to him. 53-yard kickoff return set up the tying field goal. Arkansas on second and three. Still on the ground for Tally. With 180 pounds, there's a lot of heart and a lot of leg drive down there. And Eddie Strong grabs him, holds on to 44. Here's another third and short coming for the Hogs. Their need, well, their need is going to be two here. The Ole Miss defense can morph into a bunch of things. Look at this is a base 50 defense with two lines, the old 5-2. The next time they come up, it'll be a 4-3 or a Bears with both guards covered or a double eagle. It can be anything, and you never know which it'll be. 4-3 here. Juan Jones keeping on the option. Matt Jones inside the 40. They look for him to go up the middle again. Instead, he keeps wide, and it's 16 yards. Great fake, great block by Mark Bokerman, the right guard. Sean Andrews, the right tackle. And then George Wilson, the wide receiver, you'll see down the field as well. First, it starts with the fake. O-line moving him. Now look downfield, 88 Wilson. Look at him staying in front of the defender, giving Jones a few extra yards. 99 on the ground for him last week, the most by an Arkansas quarterback in 12 years. And tonight, six carries, 27 yards. That's the big one. Again, the option this time on the pitch is to Corey Birmingham. 
Running out of room and into blue jerseys, and he gets two. Yeah, I'm not sure I understood what Houston Nutt meant when he said this big old long-legged guy doesn't look fast, but he is. Yeah. It's I mean, deceiving. Got those long strides. Well, it's you, not real quick. You watch people like Spence who can fly trying to catch him. You can't yep. catch him. <laughs> well, Houston Nutt won the recruiting battle. Over skills like Oklahoma, Tennessee, and Miami. A lot of people had their eye on Jones at a Fort Smith. Through the middle, big hole, Mark Pierce at the 26, and Arkansas gouging the Ole Miss defense 12 more yards. Throw right up the middle on first down for Pierce and the freshman. Been, uh, coming out of sorts tonight. And suddenly we're seeing triple option football. This is this is really wishbone football from the eye with the quarterback putting the ball in the fullback stomach and reading what the defensive linemen are doing and then either leading it in the fullback stomach or pulling it. Tough to get ready for. Jones again with the give to the fullback. And Pierce is close to another first. What he's doing is he's looking at the defensive lineman. If the defensive lineman closes, he pulls it out. If not, he leaves it in. That time, they sort of went together. Too. They that did. was not per perfect triple option. He, he really Ball held it in there. He, yeah. leaves, he leaves his hands in too long. He's a little indecisive. Get your hands out of there, Mark. Okay, I got this ball. Either that or Pierce took it away from him. One of the two. Here we are again. Third and inches, Jones sneaking easily. First down inside the 15. Well, I'm glad he made that one because I'm tired of guessing. First and 10. No Arkansas. guess right there. With Zach Clark watching Jones handle it on this drive. You have to say they've, they've been equally effective. Wouldn't yep, you? Absolutely. And it was interesting to get Zach's take when we talked to him. He's glad to see Mark coming in doing a good job, and he sort of gets a better perspective for when he goes back. Cedric Cobbs in at the tailback. Here's the only Arkansas touchdown. Takes it right side. And he keeps going up the sideline. He's inside the 10. That looked like he had no room at all. He's going to get eight yards out of it. He just tucked in behind Sasha Lancaster and Sean Andrews and just followed him. Andrews out. He's just going to tuck in. Watch these two right here. He's just going to tuck in behind. Stays with him. Stays with him. Tuck in behind. Say, so they can't see me back here. Wow, big old Andrews. He's a load. Oh, 73. When they made like... him a starter is when this offense started. That's right. Yeah, you're right. Game three on. Different group. Jones again with the long... Handoff. Yeah, I mean, how much longer can he hold it out there well, before Pierce takes it? It's not supposed to take that long, <laughs> but this is not something that they do as a steady diet. They're really taking a little bit of a risk here because that ball gets knocked out. If you're hit at the junction point where that ball's in the fullback's stomach, then you drop it. That's how they've gotten to this point. They have kept the Ole Miss offense to 40 plays. <laughs> and this drive is about to have its 15th play run by the Hawks. First and goal at the key. Pierce, touchdown. Arkansas back in front. I'll tell you that Pierce is coming along and those big guys up front just continue to get down there low and knock the smaller Ole Miss players back. Rosarius White, 66. Kenny Salmon, 57. Nice job. How about freshman to freshman? Jones and Pierce. Yeah. I think he's not going to remember his first college touchdown. We're, we're talking two true freshmen. O'Donohoe, 17-10, Arkansas. 10 minutes and 18 seconds to go. Weatherford, Texas product, Mark Pierce. Teaming with fellow true freshman Matt Jones. Several key plays on the second Arkansas touchdown drive of the night. And they may just stun the hottest team at the SEC tonight. This is second and four. Manning rolling. And again, knows when 
to wave the white flag. Throws it away and settles for third down. He doesn't waste any time doing that. He knows when there's nothing there. He knows just to get out of the pocket and throw it away. Perfectly legal to do. No grounding there as long as it goes past the line of scrimmage. But, Mike, of the, of the films we've studied, this is the first time we've seen him not necessarily confused, but unable to find open yeah. receivers in proper sequence and having to unload the ball this many times. Subpar numbers for him, and especially on third downs when they are only one for eight tonight. Coming after him, he gets it off for Rayford to the first down to the 39, only their second conversion. Omar Rayford, senior, out of Holly Springs. Well, Eli stood right in there. Three guys came around him. He stood right in there, knew where he was going with the ball, knew he was going to get hit, and he did by Jermaine Petty. Rayford comes underneath, a little rub-off route there. He also knows he's going to get hit, concentrates, tucks, puts it away. First down. Seven and a half minutes in the quarter. And regulation. And the one deep for Collins, Mano a mano. That time with Lawrence Richardson. And they both did some jostling. Yeah, That's yeah. the crowd wants it on Richardson. It's a no call. No this, harm, no foul. Yeah, jostling. Absolutely. Little jockey in for position here, Mike. Both of them banging a little bit. Yeah, you let that go. You let him play ball. Ole Miss went for a little bit here. They've been efficient, if unspectacular, on this drive. And this is the first. First time they really tried to hit it. This time they go four wide in the shotgun. And down to three on the play clock. Again beats the pressure. Fowler is going to turn in to the 20. His favorite target tonight, red shirt freshman Bill Flowers, a gain of 20. This whole formation is designed to get Flowers manned up one-on-one. -on -one. Three wide receivers to the left, one to the right. They have to be in man coverage. No free safety. He's coming right in here. Ahmad lets him inside. No, that's Richardson. Let's him inside. That's a mistake. No, no help from the middle. Nice catch. Fifth catch of the night. First start. He's got 66 yards for Manning. Gun trying to bounce that one outside. And a very short game. Down to Michelle. The Arkansas defense bending a little bit here, but after their one and three start this season, John Thompson held a closed meeting with the defense, said, what can I do to change this around? And no one wanted to answer, but then Kurt Davis stood up and said, we aren't having any fun. You need to relax and let us play and have fun and we'll produce. Thompson said, if that's what you want me to do, let's meet in the middle. And the defense says that was the turning point of this season. A bigger turning point would be stopping Ole Miss right now, Dave. And an impressive admission by a coach that maybe he can change, too. And all for the better. Uh, yeah. And, and Bill, I mean, that, that's really a testament to John Thompson because uh, that what Dave said is right. You know, for a coach to change like that, Michelle giving the story of him saying, okay, what can I do? You don't normally hear a coach say that. It's it's you do it my way. Well, John has a remarkable relationship and a concern about really including his men as a part of the process. He learned that Have from Don ball. Lindsay. Delay game on the defense. Non-football lack causing the offense to move. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. They call out the snap count. Somebody in the official's judgment. Houston doesn't quite agree. John is uh, also assisting in the discussion. Well, you'll see both, you'll see both yeah. guards move. Oh, you see Kurt, they're right there, the nose tackle. We'll, we'll, we'll get a shot to show that again. We'll show you what he did. Second down and five. And squeezing through his gun inside the five. First and goal. He almost stayed on his feet all the way to the end zone. Nice Four. job by Claxton. Good football player. This center, number 55, Ben Claxton, takes his man, handles him. Nice pull. Almost pops loose. Joe Gunn, senior, Amory, Mississippi. Has their only touchdown tonight. Almost got a second from the four. 538 and counting. 
Same thing, nothing this time. Kurt Davis on the tackle, and I want to go back to that penalty against who everybody understands as a defensive line or defense, you used to be able to jump into the neutral zone and then get back. Now if you jump into the neutral zone, the offense moves, it's on the defense. Here's what happened. Watch his left arm, it's going to move. Well, just when he does that, that's simulating the start of the play. Defenders cannot do that either. He didn't go into the neutral zone, but he made a quick movement that the referees thought was a thought to start the play, so the call was on Davis for that. He, he might have bar barked a little something, too. Same spot from the four. Second and goal after the first Mississippi timeout. 4.54 to go. Manning, best Thompson's group, and tie it. One week ago, Eli Manning had some fourth quarter magic. He needs to call on it again. Under five minutes, second and goal from the four. Stumbles after the snap, fires complete, touchdown. Jason Armstead. That's a route, Dave, that has to have an absolutely precise throw. Receiver starts in, spins to the outside, and the ball has got to be out there on the outside. And guess whose record he just tied? Daddy? Yep. Archie, you could smile. <laughs> At least he's not chewing his knuckles. I would be if he could chew. Now to tie it up, and no problem for Jonathan Nichols. Armstead with a touchdown, 4.50 to go, 17 all. First ingredient, perfect protection. Quarterback on his feet. Great job on the throw. There's the in and out route right to the outside. Beautiful. Another come, comeback kid, Eli Manning. Eli Manning has already pulled off fourth quarter comebacks a couple of times in this his first year as a starter. Beating Alabama. 27-24, and last week, LSU at Tiger Stadium, 35-24. 93 yards away, this drive begins with a running play, and a gain of three for Joe Gunn. They have two timeouts, a minute 37, you just go ahead and sit on it and play for overtime here, that far away. Well, you run the ball a couple of times like they're doing and see yeah, if you can get right. it out with room to work. The critical, absolutely critical thing right here is you do not turn it over. You secure the football at all costs. There's three wide outs. And it's not under center. Offset eye. Still on the ground. Stackhouse. Spinning close to the first down marker at the 17 with one minute in regulation. Man, that guy looks good at everything he does. He's spinning, twisting. The ball is securely riveted to his rib cage. He gets very close to the first. I thought he had it. I did, too. He's got a foot shot. Yeah. Big one right here. If they don't get it and have to punt, Arkansas get decent field position. But they only remember they burn two timeouts. They only have one left, I believe. You're right about that. I'm right about something tonight. Usually right. And from the looks of things, they're just waiting for OT. They do get Stackhouse in the middle for the first. That stops it at 24 seconds to move the chain. Some of the crowd is booing. There's a little unrest. Well, with Eli back there, why don't you start swinging it off the seven yard line? Wrong. <laughs> Cutcliffe's been doing this a long time. And if they had popped one of those runs for 30 yards, they were, then you would have right. seen them going into their two minute offense. It's going to be it. Ole Miss is 5-2 and two in overtime. This will be their first this year. Only one last year, and they beat UNLV here 43-40. There are so many experts in the stands, it's amazing. <laughs> Four quarters in the books, and we're not done yet. And just to remind you, overtime instituted in 1996. They've had the coin toss. Everybody gets a possession starting at the 25. Until we have a winner, no game clock. And beginning with the third overtime, you can't kick the extra point anymore. You have to start going for two. As we said, Ole Miss five and two all time in overtime. This is only the third overtime game ever for Arkansas, and they've all involved the state of Mississippi. 
They're 2 and 0. Oh. Both wins were over Mississippi State. 16-13 at 96. And again last year, 17-10 over the Bulldogs. So here they go, and they start conservatively with a give up the middle for Pierce and no game. The reason why teams win the choice, win the toss, and choose defense, they want to see what that opposing offense has to do to see what they're going to have to do to try and win the game really helps their, how they're going to go in with their play calling. Do and they Don need three? Lindsay. Do they need a touchdown yeah. or what? Don Lindsay confusing the read of the quarterback with a cross charge and really strong, hitting him right at the line of scrimmage. They're also going this way with a win back their back. Jones and the option keeper. Still on his feet. Gets an extra couple of yards out of that. Down to the 18, third and three. Michael, that is amazing how he slithers. Something. <laughs> he just makes yards. He just, look at him, 6'5", 220, doesn't look fast. All he does is do a great job of hiding the ball, and he just makes yards. Look here, he looks like he stood up. He makes four more yards. Got to be frustrating if you're a defender. Arkansas timeout. You know, I remember a time when Arkansas fans wanted to run Ken Hatfield out of the state because he was running too much option. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I, Frank Broyles, to his credit, and others have admitted that it was a mistake to let Kenny Hatfield get out of there. He, he did, he's such a great, great coach. Well, without the option, they are not in this game. That's right. Also, when your quarterback runs for 99 yards last week, the second most rushing yard by an Arkansas quarterback since 89, you start to accept it a little more. And you saw that under the score, you get the one timeout in overtime. So that's it uh, for Arkansas with timeouts. Arkansas with a three-game winning streak coming in. They've all been at home. This would be a rare big road conference win for Houston Nutt. Non-conference next week. Still in state, November 17th for the Bulldogs, and they close at LSU. And O'Donnell had better stay loose over there. Each team gets one timeout per overtime period. They do not carry over to the next overtime, so you can't save them. So that was a wise move by Arkansas to use it there. Two tight ends on third and three. Cedric Cobbs. Left tackle comes up short by a yard. Tough to blame him there, but I mean, that had been the play they've been working for him all game long. You started off tackle and you let the running back either tally or Cobbs decide where they want to go with it. This time, they don't get enough. Now, do you go for it? Get the three points or do you go for the first down? Boy, tough decisions. It's like they're going for it. Wow. I think same thing last time we saw a situation like this, a fourth down. You're bigger than these guys. Ole Miss has got to call time because they yeah. don't have the right unit out there. Yeah. They were expecting yeah. the field. Goal. Exactly right. Now it's going to let everybody's going to have some time to think about this one. I don't think I've ever seen a team pass up the field goal if you don't get the, the first down in the first overtime. Well, as I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted by the football game. <laughs> <laughs> I think with Arkansas's state of mind right now, you're on the road. You figure it's going to be tough to keep Eli out of the end zone. you got fourth and not very much, about a little less than a yard. You've got the hogs up front. they got little guys. I think you go for it. And, yes, there is a risk, but I think it is an intelligent risk. you got a 6'5 quarterback, and I, I'm going to tell you this. If they're, in a, if they're set up on defense where their D tackles are over the guards and nobody's over the center, I would not be shocked at all to see the 6'5 guy reach for the 15-yard line. If you want to see the real gutsy call, you fake it into the line of scrimmage yeah. to the fullback, and you step up and you throw it to the tight end, the old Lou Holtz play, and it will be a touchdown. I can tell you right now because Ole Miss is going to be ganged up to stop this run. Would they let the freshman do it, though? Good question. I would. Sure is easy to say standing up here. <laughs> well, we'll see if they would. Fourth and one. Cobb bounces it outside to the 10 to the 5. Touchdown. What a great call. Exactly what I would have done. <laughs> wow. All day it's been the play again. Off the tackle, let the running back decide. This time Cobb chooses to go outside. Again, you have a receiver blocking downfield. How important is that?
Extra point by O'Donohoe, who has not missed all year. 20 out of 20 for a seven-point overtime lead. And a breathtaking Cedric Cobb 16-yard touchdown on fourth and one. And two touchdowns on 16 carries. Now can Eli Manning and Ole Miss match? And not a bad start by Joe Gunn. Extra effort for nine yards. They've been trapping him all night long. Nice job. A pull and kick out. Number 76, Marcus Johnson, the younger of the Johnson and Johnson crew. He'll be pulling from here in that direction. Right up in the field. Boom. Nice job. Nice job of everything except clearing the telestrator. I just missed. I got so excited. Second down and one. Football here. And again for Gunn. Should have the first at the 15. Same play. Boy, it looked like he got past the 15. They're marking him in front of the 15. Well, it's where his knee goes. It's yep. where the ball is when his knee touches. That's the way the ball is spotted. And Thought it was got yeah. third down. Yeah. And it is not a, a, a science. It's an art. <laughs> it is not real scientific. What do you do here, Mike? Oh. Too late. Third down. <laughs> I'll tell you after the play. It's good, Mike. <laughs> Yeah, it's always if they did the right thing. The sneak, yeah. perfect call. Yeah, you had that in all the way, didn't you? Perfect call. That's Do it all the way. That's what you were going to call, I could tell. Mm -hmm. Let me know from David Cutcliffe's face what's at stake. But Manning does have enough for the first right on the 15. 240-pound Charles Stackhouse helping move the pile just enough. I think he's... I think he's beckoning to the bench saying give me the ball please look for play action as well they just had successful running plays play action may work as well oh, give it again to the tailback down and he's got him four down to the 11. i am becoming more and more of a stack house fan yes he's great with the ball in his hand but he's also a heck of a lead blocker and he made the key block on that play Oh, watch that. His signal was my shoulder pads are falling off. Oh, they sure did. <laughs> well, it sure didn't make him bashful. He just took the linebacker and root hogged him about six yards backwards. So towards Sanford checking in. They pull back for Stackhouse on second down and six. Arkansas by seven in overtime. Manning pump fake. And the throw to the end zone is incomplete, intended for Armstead. It will be third and six. Sorry, right, it, it's third down I mean it, it's four down territory they obviously have to get it in the end zone so they still can get the first down at the five it's the way they have to approach it a rare mistake by Eli I'm not sure what his error was if he didn't look through the proper progression but he took responsibility they go four wide shotgun Last time they had a bad snap in this formation. Not here. Quick turn in and incomplete. Intended for Flowers. Last gasp time for Ole Miss. Ahmad Carroll, the Batman from Atlanta. In close, tight coverage on Flowers. Flowers has been hanging on to those the last two weeks. Now you make your choice. You keep the man coverage tight on the outside, and you bring people to try and make Eli make a quick decision here. I think you do. I think that's what you have to do. Put a lot of pressure on those corners, and if that's what's going to happen. They either get here. six yards, a touchdown, or it's over. Well protected to the end zone. Can't <laughs> Did he thread that needle or what? All week long, the Ole Miss people, especially Langston Rogers, the venerable SID, says this kid can play. This kid can. Now, big mistake. They're running off with the football. Armstead ran off with the football. That's supposed to be a delay of game penalty. Yeah, you need this point here. That would be a five-yarder only. The officials let it go. Nichols has missed only once all year. 
Just a 20-yard field goal earlier tonight, but he drills this one. And we're tied after one overtime at 24. You're saying he drilled that thing? Drilled it. Is that better? <laughs> what a pass by Eli Manning. Armstead coming across the middle. That is a rope. That is right over the top of the defenders. Perfect throw. It was man coverage, but there was a linebacker underneath. There was a floater. Actually, it's Hammond, the free yep. safety. All he's got to do is get a hand on that oh. football. Floater. Arkansas's choice. They will play defense. Ole Miss will be on offense. First down. All right, okay, so they, just the opposite of the first overtime. That, by the way, a new single-season record for touchdown passes, breaking Romero Miller and Charlie Connerly's co-hold of that mark. Down to Michelle. Dave, you mentioned the bookstore where you can find this book, Manning, an autobiography by Peyton and Archie. Last paragraph of the book, Archie says, people asked me if I knew all this would happen, if I thought Peyton would be so good that right on his heels would come a little brother with similarly developing skills. The short answer would be, of course not. As proud as I am, I didn't know and wouldn't have dared to dream it, but I do know this, it wasn't a fluke. Nope, nothing looks... Couldn't agree more. Lukish at all. Couldn't agree more, Archie. Ole well, Miss into the wind. Manning scrambling. Firing. The flower is complete. And a first down. He's to the 14. I think maybe Flowers has found himself a job. Great job, Eli, getting on the corner. Biding some time, waiting for his receivers to come to him. That's what Flowers did. Play action. Get on the corner just a little bit. Got yourself some time. Perfect protection by the big guys up front. Manning. The change. And the running play for Garn, who is inside the 10-yard line. A gain of eight. And you notice one big difference in this over second overtime than the first is the direction they're going. Mississippi got to choose. They're going right where their fans are, knowing that Arkansas is going to have to go the exact same way. The first overtime, Arkansas chose to go where the construction was going on, didn't have to deal with the fans. When they have the ball, they will have to deal with the fans. Right now, they're dealing with an aroused Ole Miss offense that's just knocking them off the ball. Second down and two. Five for the first down. Yard they need and no gain for Joe Gunn. They've got third and two coming. Big play by the nose guard, Kurt Davis, 94. He knifed in the A gap, got Gunn's feet, got him on the ground. These things, these little things like that are the things that win in OT. We've seen so many second and twos that I turn into third and ones. <laughs> And then fourth and inches. Yeah. And then well, me making a wrong guess. Yeah, but also, these uh, offensive coordinators have been conservative. Both head coaches call the plays. Passing set with three wides in the shotgun on third down. If they give it inside for Stackhouse. He's got first and goal at the three. And the big guy just would not be denied. Got those legs pumping and pads down. Ripped through for the first. He got jumped on his back like somebody was trying to rope a steer. Well, he's yeah, a I'm big. an NFL scout. I'm going to get Stackhouse on my Why don't you just try and jump it. on his back? Look at those pads. Look at those pads <laughs> down. Jermaine Brooks just trying to hop on his back and got a little ride. 290 pounds of Jermaine Brooks. Armstead is left. Flowers is right. First and goal. Three-yard line. Tied in our second overtime at 24. Go go. That's the kind of leap you look for at the goal line, not at the three. There is a time and place to leap, Joe. And Joe is a great leaper. I mean, he goes up and over as well as anybody I've seen this year in college football, but not from the four-yard line. It's a long leap. The play's pretty well blocked, but somebody went up. Jermaine Petty, about 250 pounds of Jermaine, met him in midair. No game, same set. 
Second and goal, play action, short toss is too short for Stackhouse. It was underthrown, and again, Eli says, my bad. That when you're running, you're running away from the quarterback, that ball's got to be above your knees. He had Stackhouse, who he threw it to. He had Ziegler behind him in the end zone. He had one or two choices, went for the shorter, looked like easier pass, but still threw it too low. Well, nobody said he was perfect. Maybe his mom. Yeah. Like your mom and my mom. Pretty much. And Dave's mom. Four wides. They run the shotgun. They ran it out of this last time for Stackhouse. And there's the snap and a sack from behind. Jamar Gallon. Oh, boy. Has spent all kinds of time in the Ole Miss backfield. And he causes a fumble at Arkansas coming up with it. A gambling defensive call, an intelligent gamble. Jamar Gallon, number 39, coming off the edge. And remarkably, because of the poor snap, Eli did not see him, did not realize he was coming, got hit from behind, the ball came out. Snap slow, difficulty handling it, and a little loss of presence. This is why understandable. This is why when you win the toss, you choose defense. Now Arkansas knows all they need is a field goal. I would suspect you'll see nothing but runs here. Keep it conservative and line and get in position for a field goal for the win. Gallon turns it over to Jones and the Arkansas offense. Any score wins now. And they start with Cedric Hobbs and five yards. And now Mississippi saying they coughed it up at the end. There's a whole lot of jostling at the bottom of those piles and the ball being ripped at. These By two the way, teams. They credit on the recovery the nose guard Kurt Davis. Kurt Second Davis has risen to the, the OT occasion. They come down to O'Donohoe to decide it. Hobbs again. About two this time. Another third down coming. All right, Phil. Now, how important is it here? to run the ball where the kicker wants the spot from. Very, very. And I was just about to say, most right-footed kickers would prefer to kick off the left hash. It would be very wise to get in the middle of the field, or if you can't get down in the middle of the field, get over on this left timeout. hash as opposed to where they Arkansas, are. That is the only timeout of this overtime period. Well, a sinking feeling all through Bob Hemingway Stadium right now. They just have this sense of dread. With Arkansas looking at third and three, even if they don't pick it up, they'll have O'Donohoe ready to try and win it in this second overtime period. I think you run the quarterback down the line of scrimmage with instructions not to hand it off or pitch. Get on the ground in the middle of the field. If you got something, turn it up and take it. Tuck the ball away. If you make the first down, fine. If not, kick it. Mississippi looking for the opportunity to tie up Auburn for that SEC West division. Auburn was idle today. The Auburn Tigers turning to Arkansas Razorback fans right here. Third and three. And they set that Cobbs. Taking it on the left side. That's no game. On will come Brennan O'Donohoe to try and win it in double overtime for Arkansas. And this will be right at about a 35 yarder. He has his career best 45 yards already on the bench tonight. And has missed only once all year. This will be angle left to right. Chuck Nally to snap it, Dowell Loggins to hold it, and now Ole Miss to try and ice O'Donohoe. I just wonder if that works, try and ice the kicker. Sure works on some of them. I had to be, a, if you're the long snapper in the National Football League, you're also the counselor for the kickers and the punters. What do you say if you're Houston not to try and avoid 
what Ole Miss wants to have happen. Have him go get Tell all him a joke. Say something absolutely ridiculous so his eyes get big. He says, Jeez, coach, I can't believe you said that. And you say, hey, just relax. Let's have some fun over here. We all know what we're going to do. Get out there and just have some fun. Knock it through us. Go home. One of the best things I've heard that a coach said to a kicker in this very situation, R.C. Slocum at Texas A&M got his kicker over and said, you got to be loving this. This is why you came here. You're going to knock this through and be the hero. All positive. Yep. Wouldn't let any other thoughts. Something like in. that. O'Donohoe, 35 yards for the win. Oh, it is no good wide right. Ain't life interesting. We got us a football game. There won't be any more. It's the point kicking. We're into the third OT. Oh. Maybe the third over time will be the charm. <laughs> Ole Miss has just been given an enormous gift. Will they accept it? Can they take advantage? O'Donohoe wide right on a potential game ending 35 yarder. How close was it? Mechanics are good. The snap's good. The hold is excellent. He's pushed it. A foot. That's a Scott yep. Norwood miss. That's a he, foot, yep. wide right. He was expecting to draw it in. That's what right footed soccer style kickers normally do. And the thing just went straight as a die. And I watched him when he went off and everybody patted him on the butt, patted him on the shoulder, said it's okay because they may be counting him on him again. You get your kicker down the there and you said, that, hey, you hit it well. Don't worry about it. You're going to win the game tonight. We still need you to win the game. He kicks this time. You'll have the wind at his back. That means anything for him. Jones with the bootleg keeper, Matt Jones. Touchdown! How about the true freshman? One play, 25-yard Arkansas touchdown, and then the third overtime and on, you go for two. Right, you have to go for two, and another great block by George Wilson, a wide receiver down the field, and guys, I'm going to tell you, I'm not so sure he didn't step out of bounds. He was close. Yeah. A brilliant call by Houston Nutt. And a miscontained. We showed earlier in a reverse situation how LP Spence, number 48, kept contain on the quarterback. His job is here he is. He's right here. He gets beat. He gets too far inside. And look at the big guy run. He just runs away from him. He really does have four or five speed as advertised. I thought that right foot went out. I don't think it did. It looked like he look stayed in. And look, look at George him. Wilson down block, and he'll just come in here. That's a great job. Here's the shot of his foot, staying in bounds. Wow, is that close? <laughs> a rare error by Michael Gullick. Uh, I made a few of them tonight. No, he just said he missed. Yeah, he made, made. but he did. I, I can't say enough about these wide receivers getting down. I know we're going to talk about Matt Jones, uh, or Jones and what he did, but those receivers down the field, George Wilson on this one, we've called his name yep. a few times doing that. And their coach, George Pugh, insists that they block. He also would like them to catch the ball a little better, but they have done a great job. Okay. Going for two here. They have to go for two now. Dobbs and Pierce, the offset eye. Option reverse. The Corey Birmingham can't get away from Spence. No, he does. He keeps on his feet and finally dropped at the two. What an amazing effort by Birmingham. To get out of jail, Spence had him dead to rights. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Spence was there, and even though it didn't get him on the ground, he's the reason that the play didn't work. Watch the effort here by Birmingham. Are they counting enough on these freshmen? Look at tearing away from that tackle. Boy, the heat gets met here. Oh, and Seneca Taylor and Anthony Sims keep him. Out of the end zone. No two point conversion. 30 to 24, Arkansas. This started out as a 
old school Southeastern Conference field position football game, and the final score is going to be heaven knows how much. Into the 30s now. Eli Manning and Ole Miss. Second life after the fumble into the last possession. Conservative start here with Gunn for three. Oh, if Gunn would have cut that one outside, he'd have had something. Stackhouse had a nice block on the outside, but kept it inside, kept it conservative. We're going to see some play action out of Eli Manning here. It won't involve Gunn. He's replaced in the backfield by Williams. Stackhouse the fullback. Out of bounds at the two. 20 yards. Robert Williams, who sat the last three games, had his knee scoped, and he's back and obviously full speed. And Mississippi's knocking close. Stackhouse again yeah, with a kickoff just, block. You took the words right out of my mouth. Look at these guys spinning. What do you think there's any want to get in the end zone here? Wow. <laughs> That's just great running. That's great sudden by the staff at Ole Miss. At the two, first and goal. They'll get down up in the air again, and down at the one foot line this time. Well, he's diving a little closer now to the goal line. Last time was a four, this time from the two. Now he really This is dive. diving yeah. area right yeah. here. Well, the key to diving is for the O-line to get movement so you can actually leave the ground up into the line of scrimmage. And the Ole Miss does. Your man Metcalf does a great job, Mike. Knocks his guy back. Manning for the sneak. No signal yet. They have to unpile this one for a while. How do you tell? No, he didn't get it third down. That's the only trouble with the sneak. The officials really have a very difficult time determining. And what happened then is Eli got up a little bit too much. You got to get your shoulder pads down on a quarterback sneak right behind those big rear ends and drive your legs. You get up, you get met by the linebackers. I'll tell you one big difference here. No push from the fullback behind. <laughs> Third and a foot. Works. Touchdown. Joe Gunn and Ole Miss ties it. 30 all. When they Homer, can win it with a two-point conversion. When Homer Smith was coaching with us at Alabama, we had a contest to see which tailback, if any, could leap up and over. And we had a guy named David Castile, and that's what he could do. And every time we got down there, he just did a jackknife into the end zone. Gunn's got the same gift. You got to get three yards for the win. Where do you go? Well, you're probably going to either on the hash, so you're probably looking at a rollout by Manning, so he buys some time. Receivers can work his way. Or a one-on-one -on -one with Flowers over there to the short side. Oh, flowers in motion. Manning rolling right. Looking. End zone. No, it's broken up. He had both. Jamie Armstrong and Omar Rayford back there, but Ken Hamlin was back there too. Four overtimes, anybody? That's my bedtime. Quadruple overtime coming because of the two point miss. Lawrence Richardson almost for the intercept. The game that wouldn't end. I don't know if anybody <laughs> wants it to end. Just way too entertaining. 13-13 through three overtimes. It was 17-17 at the end of regulation. Is that an incredible getting, shot? It's, it's, it's way up on top of us now. We yeah. wow. showed it. It was just barely creeping That's up over the, uh, the end zone. Stand. It was orange a while ago. Now it's white. Why, Bill? Because the little man, uh, the man in the moon, changed the color. Oh. Ole Miss possession to start overtime number four. Manning rolling, throwing low, and Stackhouse somehow makes the catch. Pick up a four. Eli's really struggling yeah. with his yeah. accuracy here on the little 
on the little diagonals by the backs, and they're really not hard throws. He makes them every day better than that. While you're sick about it, that's a 240-pounder yep. at Stackhouse if he gets the ball in open field, turning it up. Yep. Instead, great catch, gets him over three yards. Great back, quick drop over the middle, all alone, touchdown, Flowers. The mark of a great quarterback is what he does after a bad play. He's feeling bad, he takes responsibility, he pats his chest, and what does he do the next play? He makes a perfect throw for the touch. Here's how I'm going to break that one down. Wow! <laughs> Are you kidding me? Right on point, too. Well, again, they have to have to go for two points. We really saw what didn't work last time. Again, they put it a little bit toward the left hash to give them more room to the right. But not all the way. That's exactly right. Which may be your theory now of going to the short side, Bill. Same look as last time. Armstrong and Rayford right, Flowers left. And Manning out of the gun. Looking right to the corner of the end zone and a dive by Armstrong comes up just short. That was a full field read, which a lot of teams don't even do. He looked to his left for Flowers, didn't have it, had a throw to the right in the back of the end zone and narrowly missed it. Great job on the touchdown. Flowers going to get free right in the middle of the field. You see the look, late look here. Gets Flowers back. Gets him the chance to get behind him. Remarkably, a blown coverage down here. He's running all alone. Because I'll guarantee you, Caleb Miller, the linebacker, was not assigned to him. And then Armstrong back corner of the end zone just through his hands. Jones taking over, keeping 4-2 maybe. That's the best game tackling we've seen maybe all night against a Matt Jones option keeper. Now, I'm going to tell you something, Bill. You talked about it before. They are not going to let Matt Jones beat them running the ball. They're going to bring up that extra tackler. Now you may have to see what you called for before. I think the option play action pass. Play action off the option. The reason you don't see a lot of game tackling against the triple option is because everybody has to stay in place to play responsibility. Jones had thrown three passes all year before tonight. He's 0 for 2 tonight. Looking to pass here. Throws in zone. Man up and it is caught by George Wilson. Touchdown. George Wilson is doing it all tonight. Catching the ball, blocking downfield. This was a great job of redirecting on his part. Saw his quarterback start left, come back right. He does what every rece receiver should do, follow his quarterback back. And Matt Jones has completed two passes as a college quarterback, both for touchdowns. This guy is going to be a legend before his time, too. I mean, really, this is amazing. Watch the movement in the pocket. This is the movement of a veteran. He is not running scared. He's looking for somebody, and then he makes a perfect throw over Seneca Taylor to George Wilson. One for three for a score last week against Auburn. One for three for a score tonight against Ole Miss. George Wilson and Richard Smith with the celebration. Now can they get the two-point conversion for the win? See, that right now the ball's in the middle of the field. Now you got to wonder, that, will they just run their good old-fashioned option play? They might very well. Here again, this is a great time for the little play action and the pop pass to the tight end. You can't cover. The linebacker's got to step up yep. to take the fullback, and you pop it to the tight end who releases. All Eli can do now is watch. And pray. His try for two. Just missing. We'll see how Matt Jones does. Option right. Pitch to Corey Birmingham. No chance. <laughs> They're not going to give you that, Houston. <laughs> Go it, call it. They're going to have the extra tackler every time. <laughs> You're going to have to 
Take a deep breath and let him throw a play action off of it, I swear. Five overtimes? <laughs> Are we at number five now? Matt Greer, hello. We're still not done. <laughs> I don't know when we will be, or if we will be tonight. Fifth overtime starts 36 all. Now they have Jones ready to throw. Right and how open is this man? But he has to go to his knees to make the catch. And it's Marcellus Poydras first catch of the year. 14 oh, yards to the 11. Jones can't believe it. He short-armed the thing. Instead of slinging it out there, he aimed it, and he threw it in the dirt. Boy, let's, let's see if that one comes back to haunt it off, because that was six. That was a walk-in. Rodgers actually does a good job making any kind of catch. They run right side for Cobbs. He stood up by Greer. He waits for help to arrive. Kevin Thomas, he's played almost the entire game after Lanier Gothi came out in the first series with an ankle, and it was Thomas there to help Greer. I'll tell you something. Unofficially, we have Greer down for 15 tackles. I was just about to say, Greer has been such a factor in this football game tonight, and we have shortchanged him. We've called his name, but we really haven't pointed out just how active he's been. Junior Great. college transfer, yeah. making just his third start. Great tackle. One man has been big right there. LP Spence out, second and seven. Play fake. Jones, one target in the end zone, and that one's incomplete. Intended for Richard Smith. Nice job by Justin Coleman. Defensive backs earn a scholarship by breaking on the football and driving. That's what he did. He planted his foot. Drove on this out cut, got over the top without interfering. Yep, that's the key. His left arm got yes. it, his right arm didn't touch. Exactly. And it's always the right or other arm will get you in trouble. Great nice. job. Good coaching by Mike McIntyre, the secondary coach at Ole Miss. Third and seven. Jones still on his feet with the option keeper for a touchdown. <laughs> How in the world does that big guy do that? There's, they had it stopped. Yeah, there's no way he should have gotten the end zone. And he did. He is just rangy, strong, and so much quicker than he looks from up here. Great fake. Buys him a little time to, to Pierce. Bad tackle by Von Hutchins. The big man with the spin move. And elusive. 15th carry, 95 yards. This after 99 yards. I was about Last to say, week. he's almost up to his quota. Yep. Oh, it took him five overtimes to get it. <laughs> Two touchdowns. <laughs> Rushing. And uh, one throwing. So we're here again. Can you make a two point conversion? I'll tell you really what. Really put the heat on Ole Miss. There is not an empty seat in this house. Nobody has gone to the parking lot. Not want, a soul. You always want to make sure the fans get their money's worth. I, I'd say they got it tonight. Von Hutchins, though, was there. Guys from Mississippi. He was right there. He was in perfect position to make the tackle. Give Jones all the credit in the world. Nice spin out of it. Great determination to get in. You know, we started this thing almost four hours ago. Wow. We still don't know a winner. Here we go. A little bit off, a little bit inside the left hash to give him a little bit of room to the right if that's the way they choose to go. That's Let's exactly go. what I was did. Jones looks to throw this time and has a man open, and it is incomplete for Mark Pierce. And who's there? Mr. Kevin Thomas. We have him for nine tackles, but none of them as big as that play right there to get in Pierce's line of sight and keep him from catching that football. Because it looked like the throw was perfect. It, it, it did. You know what? You wonder if Jones should have gave a little air on this one. It would have been oh, got over Thomas. He looked like he tried to get some air on a little under throw. Ooh, Thomas that's... makes up the, the, yep. the space. Is that just pure luck or is he reading Pierce's eyes there? No wind to reach out. 
and he's just reaching up in desperation. Yeah. It, it wasn't luck because he took an intelligent angle to be between the throw and the, and the receiver. Ole Miss again needing six first. Then they'll worry about their two point conversion. And they start going through the middle for an eight yard pickup. Joe Gunn. Here's what it means for Ole Miss. Picked last before the season began in the West. They win it. They're tied for first with Auburn. Auburn is the only team to beat Mississippi, so they still need somebody to uh, help them out and knock off the Tigers the rest of the way. But Ole Miss this year does not play the top three teams in the East, South Carolina, Tennessee, Florida. Schedule's breaking their way. They need to finish this job there. In five overtime, they still haven't gotten it done. Joe Gunn will have a first down, though, at the 14. I'm going to tell you what, what I've seen, guys. I've seen no players out there with their hands on their hips. You want to talk about great conditioning programs. This is why you run the sprints when you run them, for situations just like this, so you can be fresh and you can execute. What I remember is diagonal patterns by Stackhouse where the ball wasn't thrown well. Don't be surprised to see the ball in Stackhouse's hand with a better throw from Eli. Back in Gunn's hands this time. Pick up of two. One of the things that David Cutcliffe believes in very strongly, going back to his Tennessee background with Philip Fulmer and Johnny Majors, is to be able to hammer the ball in critical situations and just pound people down and knock it in the end zone. So that's what we're seeing right here. This is not an accidental thing. This is what they want to do. Either our chief or anybody else is seeing this. Now here, five overtimes. Manning to the end zone. Ziegler, touchdown. <laughs> right away he goes in the timeout to talk about the two-point conversion. Roomy to Roomy again, Dave. That is going to be one festive apartment. Hey, and Archie just smiled. That's the first time Archie smiled all night. They'll be smiling a lot more. They get this two-pointer. Wow. What an absolutely incredible game. Your tight end Ziegler did. He's coming out here. He did the arm over on Gallon. Nice little swim move. Watch this now. Oh, yeah, there it goes. It's smiled. a smile. All right, Arch. He's probably the first one up there so, saying it ain't over. It ain't over. No, both teams have missed two two-point conversions. I wonder that's why many, we're at a fifth over. I wonder how many rollades Archie's had tonight. If that's your kid out there, I mean, how do you feel? Gracious. I know this. When Billy Curry was a long snapper for Virginia, his mama couldn't even watch when he went out for the punts in critical situations. At least I could watch. Here, Arkansas. Boy, where do you begin to try and read the mind of John Latina when he has an Eli Manning and he's got a gun in the stack house? All these. Well, he also target. he also has David Cutcliffe. He might have a little input. <laughs> Again, close to the left hash, give him more room to the right. Two receivers starting to the short side, though. A different look. He wide. Stack house, the only back. And Manning over the middle, another one incomplete. Mercy. And another play by Ahmad Carroll, our Atlanta man with the foot speed and the quickness. Ken Hamlin and Robert Williams meet just inside the goal line at another missed two point conversion. Well, now it's become history. This is the first ever six overtime game since overtime came into the rule book in 1996. So this is totally uncharted territory for both Arkansas and Ole Miss. And Ole Miss starting this overtime with a throw out to the flat. Much better executed this time by Manning. Stackhouse has it out of bounds at the 15. A lot better when that guy's rumbling up the field than having to reach down by his shoelaces to catch I'm the ball. I'm telling you, he is <laughs> such a force. He's either blocking somebody and knocking them down for his quarterback or tailback, 
or he's catching the ball, I wouldn't mind handing it to him on that trap they ran early in the game. By the way, where credit is due, Ahmad Carroll making the defensive play over Robert Williams to break up that most recent bonus two-point conversion try. First and ten. Got him. Coming left side, wide open. Ziegler, another touchdown. Beautiful execution at the boot with the drag pattern from the tight end coming across the field. We said it early, Bill. Fullbacks and tight ends are difficult to cover in play action and boots. Especially down on the goal line. And yes, these men are in shape, but I'll guarantee you everybody's starting to get a little tired. Big Marcus out there to provide protection. Ziegler across the field. Good acceleration by the big former QB from Ohio. Well, what he does, he blocked first. He yep. blocked Carlos Hall first, baited him into it, and then went out to his pattern. Manning to Ziegler twice in the fourth quarter last week at LSU for the go-ahead and clinching touchdowns. In overtime, two more Manning to Ziegler touchdowns tonight. Here he is right here. He's going to block first. Watch him block. A great job. He blocks, blocks, then releases. Nobody can get out to him. Anybody who has him in responsibility eyeballs him, sees he's blocking, then takes their eyes off of him. Then he releases. Great patience. Going for two has produced nothing but heartache for both Arkansas and Mississippi. But at some point, somebody's going to make one. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure? No. Uh, that's, a, that's a guess. <laughs> going with the odds there. And he will come with a shotgun, three wides, and Bill Flowers in motion. An inside give for Stackhouse. He got him. Nice call. The inside trap to Stackhouse, effective every time they call it tonight. 240-pounder Stackhouse on a 190-pounder Ahmad Carroll. Ahmad Carroll breaks up the last two-point conversion. This time, he's asked to tackle a 240-pound pole of fullback. And Stackhouse wins this one. See Carroll come up on your left-hand side. He's there. He does what he has to do. He goes low. That's what he does against a big man. And Stackhouse able to stretch it over. Now, Houston Nutt and Arkansas must get a touchdown and the two-point conversion to get us to overtime number seven. Jones rolling, nobody open. Still looking there. And finally stops somebody open. And it's his tight end, Nathan Ball, who ran. <laughs> to the two. Second catch of the year the for Nathan key, Ball. The key, the key, the key was the protection. Very poor effort in pass rush by the Ole Miss front. They are so tired, they can't get off a blocker, Mike. I'll tell you what else is key is this guy's used to running the ball. He has the patience to not take off. It looked like he wanted to and just wait for someone to come free. Charlie Anderson was in front of him, broke to the middle, ball all alone, 23 yards, first and goal. From the two, it is Pierce, touchdown, Arkansas. <laughs> Oh, took them all a two play. You've got to be kidding me. Now they have to do what they have not done. Make that two pointer. They're both over three going for two. Both defenses are, are really reeling now. And Mike, you played over there, and it's hard for me to concede, but on defense, you do have to run more than the offensive lineman. Yep. You do get tireder from rushing the passer. It's not as hard to protect as it is to rush. And the old lines have sort of taken charge well, and, here. And what's happened is I said earlier how they didn't look as tired, but once you start, it can only take a couple of plays, especially when you have to run after a quarterback like you just did that much. It'll it'll sap you pretty quick. The injured player, by the way, is Arkansas's right guard, Mark Bokerman, and they just now have him up on his feet in the end zone. Let's go down to Michelle. Talking about the defense being tired, the Ole Miss defensive unit was tired in the last overtime. I know it wasn't that long ago, but they are exhausted. Whenever the coaches are calling them to the sidelines to talk things over in the timeouts, they have a tough time getting there. They are straggling in one at a time, shaking their heads. They are spent, Mike. I think it's about time the coach goes to them. <laughs> 
In high school, you can do that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Four hours, five minutes to get to this point. Wow. History's first ever six overtime game. And if Arkansas can get three more yards, we'll go to a seventh. I feel like I'm repeating myself again. The ball inside the left hash, a little more room to the right side. You could just run the tape of me saying that now. Well, they're easing it over toward the middle of they, the field. They really are. It's coming over about a foot over overtime. <laughs> Lancaster, the fullback, ahead of Cobbs. Two tight ends. Fake to Cobbs. Jones looking end zone. Firing back of the end zone. Got it. Oh. No. <laughs> You're not going to believe who caught it. Jason Peters, who was a defensive end until last week. 305 pounder just sat down like a big old rock in the back of the end zone. <laughs> well, that's, I still think there's a tinge of jealousy in your voice. You, there is. You're right. Okay. <laughs> Just think, this could be Mike Gullett, coach number 86, coming across the back of the end zone. He's lined up the right tight end. He's got nice movement. He just finds the open spot like he's been doing it all his life. They had to change Jason Peters' number. Yeah. He was 99 until today. He's 86. He's a tight end. I think he's got to stay a tight end. <laughs> We're going to stay in Oxford for seven overtime. <laughs> It's hard to figure how anybody can still be standing over there, much less still be pulling off great play after great play. This is also the highest scoring overtime game in history. You'd figure that because it's the this first one ever to last this long. Seven OT periods at least to decide this one. It was 17 17 at the end of regulation. It's 50 to 50 as Arkansas. <laughs> Begins OT7 with a run by Cedric Cobbs and a nine-yard game. You know, it's been interesting. They haven't taken a lot of plays to score. No, the defenses are just reeling. They, they really can't are get now. off blocks. The big guys are having fun knocking them back. Now, this is what you love to get the defensive lineman tired. That's a record right there. Wow. Of course, it would have to be because yeah. that's a record. <laughs> wow. Now you got my breakdown, Bill. The wow. I got him. Another give for Cedric Cobbs. Fighting hard to get to the line of scrimmage. And third and one coming. Kenny Jackson joined by Eddie Strong. I tell you, I really feel for the defensive lineman in yep. this situation. You're right. Because, I mean, I, I don't, I mean, nobody's ever played football this long, ever. And I mean, thank goodness it's not hot down there. You'd be seeing them dragged off with cramps and all manner of things. But they are the ones that wear the most. You're yep. absolutely right. You folks who are really angry waiting for tennis. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll get to it. Yeah. Hey, no round ball sport can compete with this. They're just late into the picture there. Tied in left side of the screen. Third and one. Jones still has it. He has the first down to the 11. Fake to the fullback Pierce. Kept it again. You know what this reminds me of, Mike? This reminds me of the last two periods of the second practice or the third practice in 105 degree weather, and the guys are leaning against each other, and the defensive lineman can't breathe, and it's just a matter of making it till the coach lets you go in. The mascots. Mascots stand up, out man. What is that Get all up, about? Man. Get, Get up. off your knee. You're not even That's getting hit. Old Mississippi Colonel. Good thing they don't make him do push-ups after every score. <laughs> Smith in motion. Jones with a roll and a whip and a roll back to the left. And looks up. Little open field oh, there. Yeah. Oh, and then knocked out at the two. Richard Smith oh. on the peel back block. Who was that he hit? Gracious. He had a, a knockout block. And Sinekar Taylor was in position for the tackle, and he missed the tackle. It's amazing, Matt Jones, these little subtle moves. Here comes Richard. Richard yeah, Taylor misses the tackle. Okay, oh, boy. Van Hutchins is in position. Oh. Boom. Wow. <laughs> Von Hutchins knocked right back home to Natchez right there by Richard Smith. Second and one, not quite enough for the first. Two for the touchdown. 
And they try the middle. That's going to be real close for Pierce. Yeah, I mean, Justin Wade, number 51, just found a little extra there. Knifed in to make the stop because the line was moving back. The white shirts, those big guys up front on the offensive side have the advantage now. That's obvious. And they mark him down for no gain. Still a yard for the first down and two for the touchdown. Wow. Just ought to maul it in. Full house. Birmingham in motion. Jones. Where will they mark it? You know what? I think Jones is getting tired. He didn't have nearly the twistability right there that we've seen from him. Oh, no. Tell me i got to make another guess. Players got to be happy every time they need a measure. You're not kidding. I can't even see where the ball is down there. Yeah, he's gassed too. He, he, he's, he's got that chin up just trying to get some air. There's that famous replay you see over and over again of Kellen Winslow in the San yeah, Diego yeah. Miami overtime playoff game having to be helped off. They all have to feel like Kellen Winslow right now. And that's how short he can. Yeah, I think he's a little short. Very good, Mike. Yep. Ooh, there's an intense Arkansan. Well, trying to will his men to get this thing in the end zone. Well, the old quarterback sneak with the fullback hitting you in the back again. And Donahoe stays on the bench. Inches for the first down, and Pierce keeps plugging, stands up with a touchdown. What time's your flight, Mike? <laughs> 5 a.m. Wow. He might need to call the airlines. How about true? These are freshmen. Pierce Jones, they're freshmen. They're true freshmen. Uh, Houston not had the, his whole freshmen. team take a shower before the game. It might want to go do that again right now. Get everybody rested a little bit. Have huh? a shower break. You and I might can stand more. Boy, I tell you. Did you take one before the game? I don't have to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't, because I can tell. <laughs> Get a little punk up here or something? <laughs> I'm just trying to think of something to say. <laughs> <laughs> they have given us plenty to say tonight here. This is this has been I'm so happy to be part of this. It's incredible. You and I, Bill, did a four overtime uh, what, division two game a couple years ago. Division yes, three. Carson Newman versus Northwest Missouri State. And we, uh, at that time, that's the best game. thing we'd ever seen. Yeah. And this is three overtimes yeah. beyond this. This is incredible. The ball's in the middle of the field. It got there, Bill. It just kept easing Finally over. got there. Well, they ran out of two point plays a long time ago. Pearson, Birmingham in the backfield. Jones under pressure. Gets rid of it. Throws up a play, and Birmingham comes down with it. Jones is thanking the appropriate authority for that one. <laughs> uh, Dave, what year is Birmingham? That would be a true freshman from Atlanta, Texas. The only guys that are still lucid are the true freshmen because they don't know what's going on. It looked like he was just throwing this one up. Again, he's buying time, buying time. Then Birmingham just kind of drifts into the end zone. No, we weren't fair to Jones. He saw he saw Birmingham. Yep. That was a conscious, that was not just a prayer. I saw him focus on 32. 32 wisely got to the exactly, end zone. Yeah. He was blocking. What presence for these freshmen. Oh. And then a proper appreciation from Matt Jones. Now, Eli Manning needing eight in the seventh overtime. Joe Gunn right into the waiting arms of Jermaine Brooks. Now, I see this, Mike. I see a little more energy from the Arkansas defense than the Ole Miss defense. Just a little more. One yard for Gunn. Now we've seen short drives. Maybe go for it right here. Try and get it in the end zone while you still have the energy. We'll see. Bowers is wide left. He's going to favor target of Manning's tonight. They're going over the middle for his other favorite, the Rooney, Doug Ziegler, and he's close to the first down. They're going to mark him down one yard shy. Well, did my usual preparation. To get us through 60 minutes, yeah. I, you know, two and three overtimes. We've seen that. Nobody 
<laughs> may never again see seven overtimes and it's still not decided. Now this is just, this is a real gut check. I mean, there's no other way to say it. Whoever has a little more endurance is gonna win this thing, Mike. I don't have the endurance, it's done. <laughs> Third and one for the first. Gun has enough to leap. And another first down. It, it seems like there's a little more intensity and adrenaline flow after one of the teams scores. When, when it's the start of the overtime, when you're kind of waiting to see what the offense is going to do. Our camera guys, are, they're sitting down too. They're tired. BMAC, BMAC shaking his head. But it seems like after one of the teams scores, and now Arkansas picks it up because they're trying to stop it for a win. And, of course, Mississippi picks it up because they're trying to get back into it again. The overtimes have lasted over an hour by themselves. And just over a three hour, three hour regulation game. Well past the four hour mark now. No gain for gun. The other thing that's going on here is a serious guessing game. Game plans long since went out the window. So very bright coaches are thinking now, trying to be creative on both sides of the ball. How can I get somebody in their backfield? If I do that, am I giving up a zone coverage that might help us to bracket somebody? Just all of that sort of thing. Well, the loss of one second down and 11. Williams motion out of the backfield. Give first man through and Stackhouse slams his way to the six. I don't think you can give it to Stackhouse too many times yep. except that you have to sort of watch his endurance too he plays so hard but every time he's called on he produces you know it's been impressive as well guys we're in our seventh overtime no turnover because that would certainly be ending it and these guys yep. have done a great job of protecting the football that's incredible and that's a great point every now and then third and two we're just inside the five for the first. They call on Stackhouse again, and they're ready for him. And they yep. stack uh, him up right at yes, the line. Yes, they did. They nailed him before he could get on track. Well, well, well. How about them apples? Time out. Cutcliffe. Fourth and two for the first. Six for the touchdown. And oh, Matt Jones boy. wondering, does he have to go back out there no. again? No, Matt's asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's not worried about anything. He's a freshman. No, I see his eyes blinking unless he's in REM already. <laughs> <laughs> Rapid eye movement. We had seen five overtime games. We had never seen a sixth overtime. You and I said overtime. that game, the Division II title game, was the best football game we had ever seen. This is past it. And this has gone beyond it. I mean, this is... <laughs> Come on, girls. <laughs> Y'all supposed to be cheering. Now, we've normally seen the timeouts after the touchdowns. Now, we see the timeout by Mississippi when they need two yards just to keep this drive going. The Colonel's fading fast. Oh, boy. <laughs> Where's the hog? Anybody seen the hog? He went to sleep in his pen. What you said earlier still holds on, Mike. Not one soul has left his book. Boy, you are not kidding. It is just packed. I said that. All right. Let's let that was a good one by you. Thank Four you. hours and 20 minutes to get to this point. Fourth down and two for the first down. Eli Manning under center. Stackhouse in the backfield. And three receivers. Manning crossing pattern. Armstead has the catch. Does he have the first down there? Wow. I think he's got the first. Yep. Yes, he does. He's got it. Quite a clutch catch. I mean, you take your hat off to Armstead. Yes, it was a nice throw, but that is so hard and that is so much pressure. And when you get tired, Physicians tell us, studies show that the first thing that goes is your eyes. Your eyes get exhausted and you don't see well. So receivers drop balls, but these guys are concentrating. Manning over 300 yards. First and goal at the three. Take the gun. Throws that one in the general direction of five yard line and the stack house and Raymond House all over Manning. 
Again, a smart play by Manning. Getting rid of the ball. He's at a receiver, at an eligible receiver. Because, what a shot. Well, because this one also did not get past the line of scrimmage, so if there wasn't a receiver there, it would have been grounded. That's right. This is almost, also almost miraculous. He's been a total of one sack all night by Gallon of Arkansas against Manning. Now staying close there. Gun motion out of the backfield. And Manning throwing the fade. Open corner of the end zone. Touchdown. Armstead again. This is a serious battle of the wills. Who will pay the price longer than the other to keep executing and keep making these scoring throws and catches? It would have been easy to drop that ball. Yep. You're tired, your eyes, you look away. <laughs> That's okay, sweetheart. It won't be much longer. A couple more hours and we'll be out of here. Caleb Miller and Eddie Jackson just kind of looked at each other after that and neither one was near the receiver and said, okay, let's gear it up to stop him because they need this two-pointer. If they get it, we go to overtime number eight. If they don't, Arkansas has an amazing, memorable win. Motion from Armstead. Manning throwing. Middle they didn't get it. Arkansas wins. Jermaine Petty, number 40, the big middle linebacker. <laughs> 58, 56 in seven. Count them. Seven overtimes. Arkansas defeats Ole Miss. For Bill Curry, Mike Golick, and Michelle Tafoya. Dave Barnett, thanks for sticking with us. So long from Oxford.